Hi, welcome to this mini Rona Morel podcast, episode 3A. I've had so many people reaching out to me about the coffee initiative that I'm working on globally with ARC 2030. So as part of the UN Decade of Climate Change, please take the next 20 minutes to listen to Stephen Fern, our chairman. He'll be explaining where the idea came from, all about it, the numbers, and most importantly, how you can get involved. Please reach out, and I hope you enjoy the session. Thanks. Essentially, the, the whole point of this program is to try to mobilise through a normal daily activity, a programme at scale around the world that has a truly global impact. And the one issue that we decided to focus on was the idea of drinking coffee and tea. And for the purpose of the argument, you can assume this is tea or hot chocolate, but we'll we just refer to it as the coffee program. And the reality is in the last 30 years globally, we've transitioned from a marketplace globally from you know, drinking coffee and tea at home to a sort of coffee shop culture that is now prevalent around the world at, at multiple levels, whether it's global chains of Starbucks down to independent coffee shops, literally to street store corner, uh, you know, mobile units that, that are dishing out teas and coffees uh, in third world countries. Um, but what we do know is that there's over 2.4 billion cups of coffee consumed every day. There's an almost equivalent number of tea consumed every day. The vast majority of that is done domestically, of course, but a significant proportion of that is done through coffee shops, tea shops, and, and places where you go in. And the experience is now, for, for many people, way more than just uh, an alternative to you know, a coffee at home. It's part of life. It's We go and sit and chat and talk and work and everything else in this environment. So because it's omnipresent, we chose the coffee shop industry as the way to drive engagement with the ARC bottom up. Oh, so it wasn't necessarily trying to get the, or, or as an alternative to getting the big brands and the global players on board. How do we make everybody on earth think that they have a role to play? And when you talk about planting one tree, it doesn't feel very much. But if you think about planting one tree as part of a, a routine or an activity you are already doing on a daily basis and that that is something shared by tens if not hundreds of millions of people around the world on a daily basis we see the ability to actually mobilize that single message into something hugely powerful and it's almost unique in that perspective so having decided to focus on coffee shops we played around with the idea of you know maybe every time you, you have a coffee, the coffee shop gives you or donates you know, one pence. It's a marginal amount of money, but again, on 100 million or 200 million cups a day, that's still a, a, a large, large sum. And we were looking at how that might work and how we'd have to engage coffee shops and it would come out of their bottom line, albeit only a penny. And something happened purely by chance where I met a guy who actually lives near to me here in Jersey, who is um, the designer of a cup called Topple. And when I first met him a few years ago, he'd literally given up everything to get this design patented. And it was a classic sort of inventor story. Everybody in his family thinks he's mad. He gave up his full-time job and he created this cup. And, and the technology was fantastic. But the, 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 the sort of I suppose the design and everything else about it just felt just routine. It didn't feel special. And I bumped into him literally you know, four or five months ago and he showed me the, the new topple cup and I was blown away. And what he'd done across multiple levels is he'd taken the concept of the experience of, of drinking coffee and actually trying to get to grips with, this is not about just the practicality of a cup that doesn't spill or a cup that be, can be secure, or a cup that can retain heat. People drink coffee because of the experience of drinking it. So when you put a typical coffee shop cup to your mouth, it's normally not particularly pleasant, particularly if you have a lid on, yeah. and you're trying to find a hole to drink out of. And do you know what? I never do. I always take the lid off. 
you want the aroma, you want the, even the way it feels on your lips is just not right with a lid. So what he did was, was literally take ergonomic design around the technology he'd created to resolve all the things that hadn't been resolved in version one. So what you're left with is a cup which not only feels great in your hand, and it looks really cool. The small cup, this is the medium cup, there's obviously the big 16 ounce for the Americans who like their gallon of coffee. But um, in essence, it's something that feels cool, sufficiently cool for GQ to talk about it as their cool things to buy you know, yeah. this month, coffee cup chuck. Cool enough for Selfridges of the thousands of coffee cups in the world today, in their design studio on Oxford Street, where they profile the best of global design, one item for each category. This is the shop, this is the coffee cup they have chosen. And that's now going in the equivalent of this in the Selfridges chain around the world, where this is being sold as a premium, the coolest design. Why? Because, well, it's um, dual layered metal, so durable. It keeps your, hot, uh, your coffee or tea hot. When you put the lid on, if you give it a full turn, that's secure. It is safe. That's not going to spill anywhere. So you could pick it up at the train station, throw it in your bag, jump on the train. You're not walking along thinking, I hope nobody knocks me or... The coffee and the brolly and your bag. Exactly. And it's all over my notes and everything else. So that is totally secure. One quarter rotation, pop the lid down with your finger. And effectively, you have a 360 degree opening that allows the full aroma of the coffee to come out with you. It is the same as drinking it across an open lid. It's not trying to get the aroma through a little tiny hole. Yeah. And the other advantage of that is you can drink from anywhere around it. You're not looking for the hole you can drink. And the ergonomics of the design of this yeah. are such that I jokingly said, and I probably wouldn't put this, it's better on the lips than I am. It, it actually is it fits <laughs> beautifully. Use that at your discretion. I'm taking I won't that charge on. You a line, but it's literally, honestly, it's just beautiful on your, on your lips. It's like drinking from a, it's nicer than drinking from a mug. And I love no it bad. because it's actually, that cup you have is in my brand colours for Coco Early. Ah, well, there we go. It was meant so, to be. So on your lips, it tastes, it, it's, it's just a lovely experience and you get yeah. everything that you get from drinking out of a nice quality mug. But you're carrying it around with you and you walk out of the shop, you want to lock it, you just rotate it, you want to open it, take a drink, you can take a drink. But if you happen to knock it over, yeah. the patented device slams that lid shut yeah. it's a bit a bit, a bit like an inner an inertia seat belt if you move it up and down it doesn't move but move it over you heard it click yeah that's locked shut so if you're on an airplane and all of a sudden everybody goes oh you can have that and nobody next door to you is getting covered that terrifies airlines it terrifies yeah. train drivers it terrifies me in the car when I'm with a cup thinking if something happens, this is boiling hot water potentially going over me, my spouse, my family. Yeah. I can drink this anywhere in the world. And no matter what happens, it just locks shut. Now it's open. Great. So it's an amazing cup. It feels fantastic. The design world is looking at this thinking that is the cup. So I, in my conversation, I looked at that and thought, okay, really cool. Then I put my two and two together in a conversation with him and said, maybe as part of our coffee initiative, we can help you sell some of these. That was all the conversation was because it's such a cool cup. Why yeah. not? Some arc branding or something. And he said, yeah, come around and let's chat about it. And I went around to his house and essentially we got talking about our scheme. And then he basically said, well, we've obviously done a lot of work with the coffee shop industry. Yeah. He said, what we're trying to do is effectively get people to use this on a daily basis rather than the, the, the disposable cup because, and then he reeled off this litany of the, the actual production process of disposable cups. Whether they, are dis whether they are biodegradable or not is almost irrelevant. You still gotta produce the damn things in hundreds of millions a day. You're still producing plastic lids in hundreds of millions a day. Now, if they were all produced, you still got that, even if it was all disposed in the right way. But the reality is, it isn't. 
it ends up in landfill. Those plastic lids don't get put into the recycling, even if they're recyclable. Yeah. So everybody in the industry knows that the disposable coffee shop space is not great. And that a lot of the coffee shop industry. So the, the essence of this was right. So there's that huge production issue mm. of trees chopped down, carbon footprint, transport, logistics and everything else. So, of course, the industry wants us to use this. Yeah. And in many respects would prefer us to use this than, than having cups, which it then has to collect, wash, put through the dishwasher, etc., cetera, et cetera. I think there's a stat which says something like you've got to use for the, econ- for the carbon footprint of making that. You've got to use it probably 120 times before you get to break even. Okay. But obviously, if we're talking about something that's going to last you 10 years, you're probably three months in before that, that hits break even in terms of its carbon footprint. So are we trying to encourage that uh, as a coffee shop? The answer is yes. And actually, we know this because every coffee shop, almost without exception, says if you use your refill cup, you get 25p discount. They're not doing that to give money away. They're doing that because in most cases, it saves them 30p if you use your own cup or 40p. Not necessarily in the direct cost of the cup and the lid, but actually in terms of managing time and logistics of getting them in, getting them packed, storage space. They've done the maths. Yeah. They'd rather we all use this and give you 25p. In some cases, 50p is the, is the incentive. Yeah. So I looked at that and thought, wow, how about 25p is really not that much. It's enough to plant a tree. Now, when I'm looking at this, I sometimes forget to take this in with me. I can go in my car and have this in my car and I forget. Maybe I just need that extra incentive to just go, don't forget the coffee cup. Yeah. Well, how about every time I use it, we plant a tree? Okay. Wow. Conceptually perfect scheme. Coffee shop's paying for this because it wants to. 25p, happy days. They are actually better off. They're trying to encourage this. So for them to get more people, they give this 25 pence to the better. Yeah. So it's a no brainer from the coffee shop perspective. And from the consumer perspective, do I really care whether my coffee is £2.65 or £2.40? Probably not that bothered. But if I go £2.65 and, and ping, you've just planted a tree. And you saw today on my LinkedIn picture, there's the tree, there's the reference, that's yeah. your tree. Okay? I can really see it. I'll get the literally ping, you've got it, and there's your what three words location. Wow. I planted a tree. Now I might remember. Yeah. So from an individual consumer perspective, this is fantastic. We can just have a scheme whereby coffee shop basically says to you, come to our coffee shop, use any disposed, any reusable cup, doesn't matter. We'll give you the 25 pence. We'll do that through the existing ARC system. So we're just gonna give you the 25 pence. It's reflected as 25 arc points. Yeah. And you will effectively get from that, here's your tree. And we'll show you where the tree is or where the ecosystem restoration has taken place. Because you can choose whether this is gonna do the Great Barrier Reef, whether it's gonna restore a forest, whether it's gonna protect an existing forest. Either way, Coffee Shop gives you the 25 points. You choose what environmental impact you'd like to have. And not only do we deliver it, we'll show you where it is. So yeah. there's t- total engagement immediately. I've just planted a tree. Bang, look where the tree's going to be. Or I've yeah. just protected some coral reef. Bang, that's where it's going to be. Total connection. Now, why this then? Why the corporate thing? Well, the angle from our perspective was, it's great to do this from an individual perspective, but how can we get people to really do this en masse at scale? And I thought, corporate co- corporate social responsibility. People you know, have this initiative, which typically are you know, meaningful. We'll get everybody to come and do a plastic run or whatever, or we'll start looking at not having plastics or paper cups in the office. How might this work? Well, how about a company buys this for every member of staff? And if we put a scheme together whereby... Everybody is encouraged to use this cup. 
And not only when I as an individual go in and say, there you go, give me my 25p, which is a personal transaction. What we can do is if you're part of the corporate scheme, because you've paid for the cup, we will connect that tree planting, not just with the individual who's done it, but basically say, you XYZ limited, because you bought a thousand of these, which are being used on a daily basis, you are responsible for, now every time that individual gets this into their Stephen Fern at ARC 2030, we can basically identify every ARC 2030 member without saying it, without attributing it to individuals. We don't yeah. want to say where you've gone for coffee, but we can go, how many cups, ARC 2030 cups from XYZ company have actually been used today? Yeah. 1,000, 10,000 this week, 500,000 this year, 5 million over the decade of UN decade of ecosystems, 5 million trees planted because you bought a thousand cups for 15,000 pounds, 5 million trees. And if you buy into the scheme, we can predict pretty much where those, what, what the numbers are likely to be. And then we can work with you and go, where do you want this? Where do you want this piece of forest that we're gonna build with your relatively tiny commitment of 12, 15,000 pounds? And if we basically map that out and say, to your staff over this UN decade, we're gonna put 5 million trees down for just five, just a thousand of you buying this cup. 500 million if it's 100,000 people, mm. 500 million trees. You're talking about a KPMG forest of a billion trees. Wow. And that becomes your CSR mission over the decade for something that's costing you a pound a year in effect, if you amortize that over the 10 years. Yeah. So for a pound a year, you're gonna have a, a 5 million tree woodland in Scotland or an atoll around the Great Barrier Reef that's protected by you. And we will map that out on our global mapping. So in effect, if you remember the million pixel kid, we would be able to go around the world and go, ooh, look, look, look. Oh, it's the big KPMG logo of that forest. It's the XYZ. Yeah logo over that bit of woodland so and then within the arc system you then get to tell your story listen yeah. to us this is what we've done this is the forest we're planting with our cup we're encouraging everybody to do this oh by the way we're also doing this with our sustainability agenda so you you as a partner of ours you get to tell this what will be a global community of people who care about the planet what your company is doing to help how it is part of the big global mission. And ultimately, when we look at this idea of a thousand companies in the world with a hundred thousand staff, a million companies with a thousand staff, whichever way you cut it, if we can have a hundred million people doing using this cup on a daily basis, yeah. a billion coffees a week, 50 billion a year, 500 billion over the decade, that's just from that top tier of companies doing this. There's 50 million businesses out there in the world. Yeah. 50 million. So this can plant a, tra a trillion teas. One single idea. By the way, that's just coffee drinking, the 500 billion. Add the tea drinkers to that, you're at a trillion trees. Ah, world okay. Economic Forum are running around telling everybody they're going to plant a trillion trees, hoping to get donations from the thousand companies that are part of World Economic Forum. Even if they get a five million donation from everybody, that's gonna be 500 million trees. We're talking about a trillion trees yeah. for, 12, for, for 15 quid a cup. Oh. So to us, it's a no brainer. What yeah. we're doing is we're, and I don't mind like the word no brainer, but it's literally a, you know, it's such a simple concept and over and above this idea of your XYZ company's woodland in Scotland or Scandinavia or wherever it happens to be. And engaging and telling everybody your story and your commitment and being part of this mission that is going to end the climate crisis. Your CSR statement each year is going to be how many plastic cup lids didn't end up in oceans, how many paper cups didn't end up in landfills, how many trees didn't get chopped down for creating these cups and how many trees were planted. 
So every year for literally 15 pounds per employee, you're going to be able to go, look what we have done on a massive scale. Very easy, very transparent, very, very big claims, because this is actually, you know, a a pretty big daily activity for almost everybody, and we can all play our part. Sorry, that's it. You've made it. The show's over. Thank you for being with us. I hope you've been able to take something away. Please feel free to find me on all social media channels. Have an awesome day, and see you next time.